So what I'm going to demonstrate today is how to apply a fiberglass scaphoid cast. Um, I've got my lovely patient Sheena here today. Um, the material you're going to need is a three inch, we like the Delta, Delta Light, it's a waterproof cast material. Um, I'm using the three inch on Sheena because she does have quite a long arm. If it was a child or a smaller woman, you might get away with a two inch. The other material you need is the under, uh, the under padding, under padding, the waterproof under padding. Um, you need some gloves for when you're handling the synthetic material, some micropore to secure your ends, some water just to um, set the material, and also some scissors. When you start your patient out, you just want to give them really clear instructions on the position you want them in. A lot of patients will try and be helpful and they'll move their wrist out of the way or they'll open their thumb up or they'll turn their hand to face them so they can have a look at what you're doing. So really clear instructions on keeping your hand nice and still. You're going to have your thumb to index finger. When I come round with the material, rather than move your thumb out of the way, you're going to move your hand out of the way. Okay. So we're going to start by applying the waterproof padding. This padding doesn't need a lot of overlap, so I'm only going to go for one to two layers. Anything more than that adds too much bulk. Um, so you'll notice I'm just going to go through with about half overlap here. You start by applying the scaphoid cast just as you would for a wrist cast. So we'll add the thumb component once I've finished the wrist component. This just makes sure you don't add too much bulk. You'll also notice that um, at the proximal forearm, it's quite long and also distally, I've gone quite high above the MCPs. You want the material, the, the under padding to finish about one to two centimetres more distal or proximal than you want the cast padding. So it looks quite high there, like it might impact on MCP flexion, but the waterproof padding won't influence movement at all. It won't restrict it. I'm just going to secure the end there with some micropore. So to do the thumb component, I'm cutting a piece about 10 centimetres and in the middle of that, I'm making another incision, leaving about sort of two to three centimetres. This is again going to minimise bulk through the web and then we're just wrapping it around the thumb. So that incision goes in the web space. And you'll just secure that with a bit of micropore. And again, that's just to eliminate too much gapping or bulking. You kind of want to contour it as much as you can with the waterproof padding underneath. And I'll just contour that nicely. So from here you want to pop your gloves on because again, like I mentioned, the synthetic material, the resin is really sticky and it's really hard to remove if it gets on your fingers. Uh, so gloves on before you handle the material. Get your position again that you're happy with, so nice opposition. I am using the size 3, the 7.5 centimetre roll here and I would do that for most scaphoid casts. When you're handling the material and unrolling it onto the patient, try and unroll it away from your body. This just makes sure that you're not putting too much tension on the material so you don't have it too tight. And at this stage here, you can see I'm going just above the distal palmar crease, leaving enough clearance for the MCPs to flex. So you want to be quite careful with your positioning of the cast material at this point. We're going to do about four layers. So we'll do two through the web space and then we'll do two through the thumb. So with the roll we're just doing here, we're just, we've done one through the web space, we're gonna come back and do the thumb here. Your incision, your cut you make in the material, you wanna leave enough material, about two centimeters, that it's gonna cover the IP. So you wanna leave enough material that's about the length of the IP that you're gonna come round. It doesn't matter too much here about your edges, because you'll capture those sort of sharp edges when you're doing your web space layer. So we're going to come back around here through here, the web space. This incision here, you only want to leave about a centimetre, so about half of what you've left for the other layer, so that you're not adding too much bulk through the web space. And you'll just grab those edges together at the end edge there, the base of the thumb. So again, being careful that you're not going too high, so you leave your MCPs free to flex. We'll come around, we'll grab those loose 
kind of jagged edges. I'm going to add another thumb layer. So again, you're just making your cat along the kind of the same plane as the first ray and leaving about two centimeters so that you've left enough room for the um, to cover the, the IP. Again, making sure not to try and touch the material on the patient's fingers as well. And you're making sure you're left enough clearance for the IP to be able to flex on that thumb. As I'm going, I'm just adding a bit of contouring through the Athena and the web space. It looks a little bit like it's going to gap here, which it will because I haven't wet the material to start with. It does leave it a bit more flexible. So I'm going to come back through at the very end with a wrist layer and that'll stop that gapping at the top. So don't worry too much about that gapping as you go. You're going to roll down the forearm here. You only need one to two layers on the forearm and really you only want to end with a minimal amount of material, of the casting material, anything more than two layers and it becomes quite hard and uncomfortable on the patient. So rolling back up again, we'll do one more layer through the um, web space. So you make your incision in line with the first ray, leaving about a centimetre and I'm going to make sure my edges here are really nice and smooth so I've rolled them under so there's no sharp edges. And I'm just going to capture that edge there with the rest of the material. Don't need to use a whole roll if, if it's not necessary. And from here, again, I'm just going back and adding a little bit of contouring with my hands. And then I'm going to use the water to start setting the material. The water actually all makes it a little bit smoother as well. And this is where you want to really make sure of your postures and positionings and that you're happy with the, the way the patient's positioned in the cast. So correct any deviations. And you just use the water to smooth out your edges. Paying particular attention to that thinner and web space. So that's how we apply a waterproof scaphoid fiberglass cast. Um, once I've finished, I'll just check that the patient's position is correct while we've still got some play in the material. It takes about five minutes to be touch dry, 20 minutes to be firm. So you can correct any deviations, rotations, extensions that may have occurred. Um, you just want to make sure the cast isn't, hasn't been applied too tightly and to do that you simply just put a finger under there at the top and the bottom um, and we'll send the patient off with a casting information handout.